September 5th, 2023, Christopher Dorsey, a.k.a. BG, will be released from the FBOP and checked in to a halfway house in Las Vegas. BG's release would not go without controversy. This is a full story in every controversy of BG's release from prison from start to finish. BG is a solo artist, plus he's a member of the High Boys. What's up, What's happening? What's up, baby? What's up? What's up, homie? What up, boy? Oh, man. I'm good. What's up, baby? What's up? What's up? What's happening? It's Lil BG, a.k.a. B Chisel. Your number one original High Boy. Christopher Dorsey, a.k.a. BG, was born September 3rd, 1980 at Charity Hospital in New Orleans, Louisiana. Growing up in the Ferret neighborhood of Uptown New Orleans, located in the 13th Ward, Christopher's family would originally live in a shotgun house on the corner of Valence and Magnolia. At the age of 12, his father would lose his life during an attempted Jackie. The young Christopher would turn to the streets, getting it how he lived. While attending middle school, he would start rapping and eventually link up with Brian Baby Williams in Stan's Barbershop. Miss Sin, who initially wasn't sure about the relationship that BG had with Baby and Slim, would eventually allow Baby to be in the young Christopher's life, later signing him to Cash Money Records. BG and Baby will grow a father and son-like relationship. BG will go on to release Chopper City, It's All On You, Volume 1 and Volume 2, also becoming a member of the Hot Boys. Before the Hot Boys and Chopper City, Doogie will work on a joint project, The BG's True Story, with Lil Wayne, who went by Gangsta D at the time. In 1998, Cash Money Records would sign a major deal with Universal Records. BG will go on to release Chopper City in the Ghetto, Guerrilla Warfare with the Hot Boys, Little Burn with the Hot Boys, and his last solo album, Checkmate, which would be before he parted ways with CMR in 2001. BG will go on to develop his own imprint where he will release Living Legend, Life After Cash Money, The Heart of the Streets Volume 1, The Heart of the Streets Volume 2, Too Hard to Beat Hollywood, and his own group. The Chopper City Boys. BG would have a short lived beef with VL Mike, a former member of the Chopper City Boys. This wasn't last long as Mike would be deleted. BG would have nothing to do with the deletion of Mike. On November 3rd of 2009, BG would be arrested in New Orleans, Louisiana after the NOPD would pull him over in a stolen Chevy Tahoe during a routine traffic stop. Jizzle would end up getting 14 years for the blickies that were found in the whip and witness tampering. After years of false BG feed reports running rapping on social media, BG will finally be released on September 5th of 2023. BG was met with open arms by Birdman, friends, and family. BG's main objective is getting in the studio as you can hear him saying this during Birdman's live at the airport. Birdman dropped that bread in his account and hit him off with a platinum and diamond cash money piece. There will be definitely more to come for B. Jizzle. To understand the love-hate relationship between BG and Terrence Gangster Williams, you must first understand the nature of the relationship. Terrence himself has taken to his platform to share that BG doesn't rock with him. Never one to shy away from controversy, Terrence has coined himself Mr. Answer Right Back, the people's champ, and has went on to more than once speak on the relationship between himself and BG, or shall I say, the lack thereof. Before he would jump head first into the streets, Christopher Dorsey, aka BG, would be a young deacon at his grandfather's church. At the age of 12, BG would experience the loss of his father. BG's dad had just come home from being on the water. 
in an unfortunate turn of events, his dad will be robbed and deleted. Without his father around, BG will begin to act out in school, becoming the class clown, skipping school, getting into all kinds of BS. It had gotten to the point where BG was making Miss Sin look unfit. It wouldn't be long before BG would go astray and hit the mean, grimy streets of the NO with Mark, Neil, and LT pulling up acts, popping up hotties, and joyriding through every hood. BG's life would soon take a turn. Ryan Baby Williams, a hustler of the hood, and his brother, Ronald Sugar Slim Williams, had just launched their own record company, Cash Money Records. Stan would put BG on the spot in the barbershop. Telling Baby that BG could spit. BG would spit a few bars, the rest would be history. Without a father figure in his life, Baby would take BG under his wing. The two would soon be like father and son. The young, talented BG, however, would still be in the streets. His gangster rap lyrics and popularity with Cash Money Records would make BG go even harder. BG, who wasn't from the Noya, would often hang in the Noya, posted in the hallway with the chopper. It was in the Noya where BG would have one of his first encounters with Terrence Gangster Williams. Knowing that he, BG, was one of Baby's artists, Terrence wouldn't like the way that BG would stare him down while clutching the chopper. Terrence wouldn't like it, but would respect it. Going on to give Christopher the nickname BG, short for Baby Gangster. The two would grow close to each other. Baby, knowing what Terrence was involved with, would not like BG to run with Terrence. Baby would look at the relationship as a bad influence that could quite possibly mess up his bag. BG, who was infatuated with Terrence's lifestyle, would put Terrence's name in his music. With the good comes the bad. And at a young age, at 11.5, would have its hooks in BG. Cash Money would continue to drop BG albums and virtually signing a major record deal with Universal. But not before Terrence Gangster Williams would catch a life sentence. It wouldn't be long before BG would leave CMR starting his own label. Jizzle at the time would be even deeper in the streets. Things would soon take a drastic change as word would hit the streets that Terrence Gangster Williams was cooperating with them people. It wouldn't be much longer before paperwork would surface. BG would go on to record the diss track I Ain't Telling with a cameo from Hot Bezo where they would make mockery of Terrence's cooperating. It wouldn't be much longer before BG would find himself in trouble with the law catching a 14-year bid. BG, who had vowed to stand on business and to never associate with snitches, would take his lick. BG was released from prison on September 5th of 2023 rejoining the CMR family. Baby in his circle doesn't rock with Terrence and with BG now becoming part of that circle again, it's pretty safe to say that BG won't be rocking with Terrence either. You are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. For the New Jack City bum, bum. Alton Patterson, a.k.a. Hot, a.k.a. Hot Beasel, is a notorious street figure from the city of New Orleans. Known for running the streets of the N.O., Hot is no stranger to putting in work. Even at one point, running in the Noya, rocking with Terrence, Gangster Williams. After the incarceration of Terrence, Hot would go on to be one-fourth of the Magnolia Boys, the group that consisted of Cello, Cito, Herb, and Hot. Alton at one time would allegedly be the muscle for BG's Chopper City Records, going by the moniker the Chopper City Problem Solver. Lucky. Chopper City Problem Solver, homie! It is no secret that Hot will get caught up on Gangsta's federal case and do a three-year bid. Hot has since then gone on to be what some might say baby's right hand man. Contrary to mockery by Terrence, Hot is almost always seen by baby side. Terrence, who has a vivid past history with Hot, is one of the few that can actually get away with ridiculing the relationship between baby and Hot. The release of Christopher Dorsey, a.k.a. BG, on September 5th of 2023 will take the streets and music world by storm. BG was sentenced to 14 years in prison for firearm possession and obstruction of justice back in 2012. 
After 12 winters and 13 summers, BG will finally be free. Jizzle has vowed to stay focused, promising not to let anything or anyone rob him of his productivity, prosperity, and peace of mind. Rumors and speculation will flood social media regarding the cold shoulder BG was seen to have given hot during the viral video of BG's release. This put logic and proper perspective behind the madness as to why the BG and hot reunion didn't seem to go so well. After the release of the video, the Federal Bureau of Prisons will report that BG had been successfully transferred to a halfway house and was projected to be fully released from custody on July 11, 2024. A newly built Federal Halfway House was relocated from Uptown to the 7th Ward in or around 2000-2001. If you know, you know. During BG sentencing, Judge Berrigan would order BG placed on three years of supervised release following his term of imprisonment, during which time he will be under federal supervision and risk an additional term of imprisonment should he violate any terms of his supervised release. The terms of BG supervised release are as follows. Standard conditions of supervision read as such. The header. These are the standard conditions of supervision or probation the court must impose on Christopher Dorsey. This does not include special conditions the court may impose on Christopher Dorsey. These are the standard conditions of supervision or probation the court must impose on Christopher Dorsey. This does not include special conditions the court may impose on Christopher Dorsey. One, the defendant shall not leave the judicial district without the permission of the court or probation officer. Two, the defendant shall report to the probation officer in a manner and frequency directed by the court or probation officer. Three, the defendant shall answer truthfully all inquiries by the probation officer and follow the instructions of the probation officer. Four, the defendant shall support his or her dependents and meet other family responsibilities. Five, the defendant shall work regularly at a lawful occupation unless excused by the probation officer for schooling, training, or other reasons. Six, the defendant shall notify the probation officer of at least 10 days prior to any change in residence or employment. Seven, the defendant shall refrain from excessive use of alcohol and should not purchase, possess, use, distribute, or administer any controlled substance or any paraphernalia related to any controlled substance except as prescribed by a physician. Eight, the defendant shall not frequent places where controlled substances are legally sold, used, distributed, or administered. 9. The defendant should not associate with any person engaged in a criminal activity and should not associate with any person convicted of a felony unless granted permission to do so by the probation officer. 10. The defendant shall permit a probation officer to visit him or her any time at home or elsewhere and shall permit confiscation of any contraband observed in plain view of the probation officer. 11. The defendant shall notify the probation officer within 72 hours of being arrested or questioned by a law enforcement officer. 12. The defendant shall not enter into any agreement to act as an informer or special agent or law enforcement agency without the permission of the court. 13. As directed by the probation officer, the defendant or the probation officer shall notify third parties of potential risk due to the defendant's criminal records, personal history, or characteristics. The defendant shall confirm compliance on the notification requirements with the probation officer. Principal Dorsey's restriction of travel would be as follows. Supervised release and parole clients travel generally is to be requested at least two weeks in advance. Christopher Dorsey should submit a written request for permission to travel to his supervising officer, which is best done by email, and then await approval from his supervising officer. Generally, travel is not permitted during the first 60 days of supervision. Those were the terms of BG's release. It was seen that BG didn't want to be broadcasted to the world over social media, being in direct contact with a convicted felon, which is against one of his terms terms of release. This man just came home. He ain't trying to get violated and go right back over his social media posts. All the talk about him not rocking with hot is cap. If Doogie didn't rock with that man, Stunner would have never had hot round when picking BG up. In my opinion, Doogie was just being smart. He obviously didn't want to boosie himself over a social media post. To have a clear understanding of the current situation at hand, 
you must first understand the dynamics of the relationships between these men. Brian Christopher Brooks, aka Brian Christopher Williams, was born February 15, 1969, at Charity Hospital in New Orleans, Louisiana, to Johnny Williams and Gladys Brooks. Better known by his stage name, Birdman, Baby is one of the co-founders in the face of Cash Money Records, which he started with his older brother, Ronald Williams, aka Sugar Slim, known for launching the major labor careers of BG, Wayne, Juvenile, and Turk, Birdman will put together the group, The Hot Boys, that would include all four. In 1997, The Hot Boys will release their debut album, Get It How You Live, selling 400,000 copies. Independently, The Hot Boys will follow up with 1999's Guerrilla Warfare. This will be the group's most commercially successful album to date, selling 142,000 copies in its first week and debuting at number five on Billboard Top 200. Taft Virgil Jr. was born on February 8, 1981 in New Orleans, Louisiana to his mother Gail and his father Taft Virgil Sr. Turk will be raised in the Magnolia Projects in the Third Ward. Turk's first appearance on the New Orleans rap scene will be with Hype Enough Records as a member of the Young Guns. In 1996, Turk would hook up with Ronald Williams, a.k.a. Sugar Slim, and Brian Baby Williams. It wouldn't be long before Turk would be recruited as one of the original members of the Hot Boys, which consisted of Juvenile, BG, Lil Wayne, and himself. Turk would also feature on many classic CMR hits before the Universal Records deal. Christopher Dorsey, a.k.a. BG, will be born September 3rd of 1980 at Charity Hospital in New Orleans, Louisiana to his mother, Miss Sin. Christopher will be raised uptown in the 13th Ward. Better known by his stage name, BG, Christopher will be one of the pioneers that will help launch Tiamara into national acclaim in the music industry. BG will begin his music career after signing to Cash Money Records in 1993 at the age of 12. BG, alongside fellow rappers Lil Wayne, Juvenile, and Turk, will collectively form The Hot Boys. BG will release several solo albums for Cash Money, including the platinum-selling Chopper City in the Ghetto in 1999. In 2001, BG will leave Cash Money Records and create his own label, Chopper City Records. On November 3rd, 2009, BG will find himself in legal troubles. He will be arrested in New Orleans, Louisiana on criminal charges stemming from three gats being found in the hot Chevy Tahoe that he was driving. On February 11th of 2010, BG would appear in court and enter a not guilty plea. On October the 7th of 2011, BG will plead guilty to two counts of possession of a firearm and one count of conspiracy to obstruct justice. On July 18th, of 2012, BG was sentenced to 14 years in federal prison and three years of federal supervised release. Turk, who had been home for 11 years since being incarcerated, would take to various social media outlets and podcasts while BG was locked up. At one point, even being accused of giving bad low that BG had already been released from prison. Turk would later say that he was talking BG's release into existence. None would be more infamous than Turk's appearance on Drink Champs. It was there that Turk would go into the deep intimacies of his time at Cash Money Records, going on to share personal details about encounters that he and Lil Wayne had with females outside of their relationships. Turk would pretty much speak on his relationship with all of the hot boys, emphatically stating that he loved them all like brothers, going on to further state that BG could not get in contact with Birdman, T.I., or Boosie. It was he who made the connection. Turk would also reveal that BG wasn't talking to him, alleging that someone had gotten in BG's ear. The straw that would break the camel's back would be none of the previously mentioned statements made by Turk. Ultimately, it would be exposing the fact that they all wore fake Rolexes at cash money, even alleging that Baby wore fake Rolexes at one point in time. Turk would later go on to say that the real Rolexes would come for Jewelry and Baby after the release of Jewelry's 400 Degrees album. I'm not too sure that I'm in agreement with that statement. Actress spent rock and rollies before the Universal deal. If you know, you know. Fans and onlookers alike would assume that it was Turk's unwillingness to keep inside business on the hush that would anger Birdman. In the words of Turk, telling the truth ain't hate me. Days before the release of BG, Baby would go on an interview with 85 South, where he would acknowledge everyone but Turk. This would add further flames to the fires that Baby would not be reaching out to Turk for the cash money hot boy reunion. Slim and Baby are smart and calculated. If you believe for one second that they aren't paying attention to how social media is reacting regarding Turk not being a part of the hot boy reunion, you would be sadly mistaken.
the past, Turk would take to social media to expose Birdman and cash money for not reaching out to him after the passing of his father. As of recent, Turk's biggest gripe has been that of not being welcomed to open arms when he was released from prison. Turk would state, and I quote, there was no red carpet rolled out for me when I came home. It was this that would prompt Turk to take the CMR to court where they were settled outside of the courtroom. If you know anything about actress, you would know that he ain't passing up the opportunity for the bag behind some petty gossip shit. There's nothing that Turk said or did on social media that directly impacted Stunner's family or his bag. You can believe you me, if and when a hot boy reunion does take place, Turk would definitely be a part of it. At what financial scale, I have no idea, but best believe you me, a boy actress ain't gonna fumble the bag on that one. If anything, the pushback will come from Wayne, who has grown to become a mega superstar since being a part of the Hot Boys. I don't see Wayne so readily agreeing to be part of a reunion without him coming out as the favorable artist. This whole Hot Boy reunion situation might turn out to be a David Ruffin versus Otis Williams reenactment. I'm the one selling the records. They coming to see me. They coming to see the temptations. Ain't nobody coming to see you, Otis. Let's be real here. No matter what you believe Turk's contribution to Cash Money Records was, there's no denying that it wouldn't be a hot boys reunion without Turk. Turk doesn't seem to be hurting for bread. He has since his release developed several businesses of his own. The bigger picture is what will BG do now that he's home. He has much bigger fish to fry than a hot boys reunion. With the current state of rap music, I truly don't believe that the solo artist alone is the way to go. Putting himself in position to launch his own label and putting fresh new talent on will be the route that I would take. If BG successfully gets past his probation without any violations, the sky is the limit. TVs, movies, books, documentary, real estate, there are multiple streams of income that Dewey can take advantage of. Recouping all of the revenue from his royalties and getting the rights to his masters is also something that Dewey should pursue other than just recording a new album with Cash Money Records. The 13th Ward is one of the 17 wards of the city of New Orleans. The 13th Ward, formerly part of Old Jefferson City, annexed by New Orleans in 1870. The roughly wedge-shaped ward stretches back from the Mississippi River. The lower boundary is Napoleon Avenue, across which is the 12th Ward. The upper boundary is Jefferson Avenue, across which is the 14th Ward, which is also the 13th back boundary of South Broad. The 13th Ward includes a section of Uptown New Orleans and a part of the Broadmoor neighborhood. Landmarks will include the Academy of the Secret Heart, De La Salle High School on St. Charles Avenue, Isidore Newman School, the New Orleans Academy of Fine Arts on Magazine Street, and Oshner Baptist Medical Center on Napoleon Avenue. The latter branch of New Orleans Public Library is an old mansion on St. Charles Avenue. This section of Ferret Street in the 13th Ward is a vibrant commercial district and home to events, including the annual Ferret Street Festival. Much of the 13th Ward was flooded badly in the aftermath of the failure of the federal levy system during Hurricane Katrina in 2005. 13th Ward is also former home to Cash Money Records, Brian Baby Williams, Ronald Sugar Slim Williams, and Christopher Dorsey, aka BG. This is the real reason why BG was released early from the feds. Christopher Dorsey, aka BG, was released from federal prison on September the 5th of 2023. Since then, there has been multiple videos chronicling his release, some even going as far as to upload videos of Jizzle getting his dreads twisted. Brian Baby Williams, aka Birdman, would take to his IG account to post a live video of BG at the airport. Before Baby would post the video, he would take to the 85 South podcast to emphatically confirm BG was indeed cash money. 
After multiple attempts at early release, BG is finally on an ankle monitor in a federal halfway house. No one on the platform has talked about BG's early release and how he actually obtained it. Typically in the feds, 85% of your time has to be done in order to be considered for early release. If you are sentenced to 10 years in prison, you would actually have to serve 8.5 years in prison. However, for most state felony convictions, you will only serve 50% of your actual sentence. Additionally, in some serious felony matters, you can serve up to 85% of your sentence. In the vast majority of state felony matter, you will only serve half of the sentence imposed. Bottom line is, federal sentencing is much more harsher than state sentencing in almost every single situation. Federal law allows a credit of 54 days for every 365 days or one year of good behavior. To be eligible for early release, a person must be sentenced to more than one year in prison. You may have heard of sentences of a year and a day that may have sounded odd but that extra day means that the person could be eligible for the early release program, whereas someone sentenced to only a year would not be eligible. The maximum number of days that can be awarded for good conduct is 54. Bureau of Prisons has discretion to award any number of days less than 54 based on its evaluation of the inmate's conduct. Calculation of the good time credit in federal prison is not simple by any means. A 10 year sentence does not mean that an inmate can be released 540 days early for good behavior. 54 days per year time 10 years. The credit is based on time actually served. If early release for good conduct is granted on a year and a day sentence, the inmate could be out as soon as 46 days before the actual end of their sentence. The full 54 days will not be granted unless a full year is served by the inmate. The BOP, aka Bureau of Prisons, has long afforded inmates the opportunity to spend a portion of their final days of imprisonment in a federal halfway house. A few years back, the BOP started calling federal halfway houses residential reentry centers or RRCs for short. The name change would not materially affect the function of federal halfway houses to provide a transitional period for prisoners releasing into the community. This transitional period allows prisoners to look for work, housing, and rebuild family community ties. There's a common misbelief that federal prisoners are limited to 12 months of federal halfway house placement. While in practice, most federal prisoners are never approved for more than 12 months of placement. The BOP has the authority to designate a federal halfway house as a prisoner's place of imprisonment, just like a federal correctional institution or other BOP institution. This is because a federal halfway house is still considered a penal or correctional facility. The following six are the levels of progression for a federal halfway house residence. Level one, for restriction usually used for sanctions of non-compliant behavior. Level two, the inmate is limited access to the community for work and treatment only. Level three, identical to level two with the exception of a four hour recreational pass on the weekend. Level four, a 48 hour residence pass is permitted provided the inmate has an approved release plan by the U.S. Probation Office and the VOA. Level five, rarely used, reserved for electronic monitoring cases. Level six, home confinement, which allows the inmate to spend an extended period of time at his or her residence. He or she has an approved release plan from the U.S. Probation Office and the OA. The rules and regulations of BJ's halfway house confinement are as follows. Residents will not receive credit for time served at the halfway house while on supervision with pre file services. Residents will be referred to a local health agency for a physical exam. Upon the resident's arrival at the halfway house, he or she will be on a 72-hour lockdown at which time he or she will not be authorized to leave. Social passes will not be granted for the first two weeks after arrival. After two weeks, if the residence is in compliance, he or she will be granted five hours of social time per week to be used in one day. All residents must return to the halfway house by 9 p.m. No overnight passes are allowed. There is no exception to this rule. All visitors to the halfway house must be approved by U.S. probation and pretrial services. Guests must fill out the visitor form and submit it to the halfway house. If a visitor has a felony conviction, he or she will not be allowed to visit the halfway house. Driving privileges while at the halfway house will be determined by the residence officer and the halfway house staff. If allowed, the resident must have a valid driver license, vehicle registration, proof of insurance, and a driving abstract from the Department of Licensing. Residents are not to form any romantic relationships at the halfway house. Residents are not to discuss their cases or pre status with any residents or staff. 
of the residence at the halfway house or at the halfway house for a variety of reasons. Residents may be under pre-trial status, serving time for probation violations, or serving a portion of prison sentence. The rules that apply to other residents may not apply to all residents. Resident goals while at the halfway house are set by the officers and case managers. All activity must be approved and monitored by both authorities. If residents have any questions and are concerned regarding the halfway house, they must notify their case managers, halfway house staff, or their officer immediately. Anytime a resident wants to leave the halfway house, they will need to submit a pass request outlining the date and time of the event, address the phone number of the place you wish to go to, and the time you are leaving and returning. For Pioneer Fellowship House residents, all pass requests must be submitted 72 hours in advance. Residents are expected to be employed full-time and are enrolled in an educational course within two weeks of entering the halfway house unless otherwise directed by their officer of the court. Failure to do so may place the resident in violation of the halfway house program. Unless waived by the halfway house or officers, residents must complete the life skill classes through the halfway house. Curfew at the halfway house is 9 p.m. The only exception to this is for employment and pre-approved treatment. NAAA meetings are excluded. Religious practices passes are approved for up to four hours every week to be used on one designated day. The proposed religious house of practice should be within five miles of the halfway house. The maximum amount of money residents may have on their person is $100. Residents are responsible for their own toiletries. Basic cell phones are allowed with the permission of the resident officer. Smartphones, i.e. iPhone, Blackberry, HTC, and droids are not allowed. Any phone with internet access will be confiscated as contraband and returned to the resident upon release from the facility. My letter, I wrote you, man. Man, I'm about to go check my P.O. box right now. I miss you. What's happening? I got that. I got that letter you sent me like about a week or something ago, right? Yeah. I wrote you back like the same night. You know what I'm saying? Like. Man, say, boy, look, you, man, see, I ain't even going to go into detail, you know, what I said in the letter, because I'm going to wait till you catch me. Yeah, nah, nah, let me, let me read, let, let me read the letter, you know. I'm going to go, I'm going to let you read that joke. Yeah. And then you go respond to any of you must go. Nah, we ain't on that, we going, we going, we going, we going to waste that time in the letter. How you living, how you doing, man, how everything doing? Man, they good, man. They round here right now. I got you on speaker. It's, they hear you. They happy to hear your verse. Oh, yeah. Bae, here go BG. Tell your, tell, your, tell your family, man. Bae. my deepest love, man. You heard me? Yeah. Here go BG. Yeah, he on the phone. Hey. Hey, what's up? How you doing, girl? Good. How you doing? You all right? You, 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 you keeping him in line or what, man? He, he, he on his best behavior or what? Hell no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> man, I'm Hell no. Nah. You need to tell him something gets in line. He ain't in line. Man, I'm sick. Look, if he read that letter, I'm going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> man, I'm walking out this man. She don't, she ain't getting no more airplay, man. You lucky I'm gonna speak you. Yeah, lucky you got me on the yeah. phone, man, because I was, I was about to teach her. Nah, was, she ain't, she ain't, she ain't, she out. She, I am mean, I'm in my, I'm in, I'm on the other side of the house, but I do got you on speak, though. You heard me? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. These people need to hear your verse, man. Talk to your fans, man. Talk, talk, talk to your Jesus. Like, as soon as I get the letter from you, like a week after I talk to him, I'm like, Phil must have called and let me even know he talked to me and that bitch took was right there. He felt bad. That's what rolled me. You know? <laughs> nah, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, you know when you when you locked up, dog, you be thinking all kind of crazy, dog. Nah, man, you know how they are, dog. Man, you, but look, I ain't, I ain't Jesus, it's like my third time, though, dog. I, will, I be sending through my. Man, bro. you ain't don't, don't do that, bro. You, 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 man, you, listen. You, ask, you, the, ask Hector. Ask Hector. Man, like, listen, you, hold you up. Be out there, listen, I be getting the word how you be out there screaming free, BG. Now, ask, you know, ask, man, you got to holler at Hector. Really you got to holler at Hector, Jesus. Listen, listen, listen. You know all that love you be showing me and, and I'll be doing for you, you know, keeping my name alive and all that. I appreciate You know, that's just the certified a high boy reunion, but it's official. The whole conversation between us is the hot boy. So, uh, 
Will it happen this year? I can, I can almost guarantee you no. But will we do one? I can guarantee you we will. Um, maybe it might happen without me. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I could. I mean, it would take a big hot check for me to be there. That's all I'm telling you. <laughs> If you know anything about Stunner, you would know that he got it out the mud. Baby and Slim built CMR from the ground up, and you don't have to be from the Inno to know that. CMR was moving major units independently before the Universal deal. At a young age, Baby would take BG and Wayne under his wing on some fatherly type-ish, raising BG since the age of 13 and Wayne since the age of 11. Before the incarceration of both BG and Turk, Cash Money artists would have a major fallout over finances. Everyone would leave the label aside from Wayne. Ultimately, they would all end up taking cash money to court. Since the release of BG, the internet has been in an uproar. Some taken to social media, disrespecting Jizzle with memes and false narratives. Turk would be no stranger to social media, as he himself has been very vocal about his past, present, and future relationship with Cash Money Records. Upon BG's release, he will be welcomed with the red carpet and open arms by Baby in his entourage. The internet would explode wanting answers as to why Baby didn't greet Turk in the same manner. Some even questioning if Turk was still a hot boy. Baby would take the Instagram live with GDP as he was on his private jet. Contrary to popular belief and false narratives being spent on the internet, Baby would confirm that Turk is indeed still an HB. In explaining why Turk was treated differently upon his release from prison, Baby will go on to say that he basically raised BG from a child and that BG is his son. Stunner will further go on to state that he doesn't have any ill will toward Turk. He didn't have a relationship with Turk before Turk got locked up, nor did he have one while Turk was incarcerated. Unbeknownst to everyone, BG has spent his last month prior to turning himself in with Baby at his home in Miami for Stunner. So there you have it, straight from the horse's mouth, Turk is still an HB. However, Baby would emphatically state that he doesn't forget the past, but in his eyes, BG and Wayne can do no Stunner will go on to further elaborate on his relationship with Manny and Juvie. When it will come to Manny, Baby will give him his praise, going on to say that he started Ciamaro with Manny and that he will always have a certain level of respect for Fresh. In regards to Juvie, Baby will say regardless of the past, he and Juvie are tighter than grip pliers. In fact, Baby will make mention that Juvie is one of his best friends. More importantly to Baby, the trust that Miss Sin, BG's mom, and Miss Sita, Wayne's mom, put into Baby, allowing him to raise their sons. Baby will go on to say, that he held BG down while he was incarcerated, making sure that he had thousands of dollars in his account at all times. Expressing the fact that Wayne, Juvie, and BG can do no wrong in his eyes, Baby will acknowledge that Sugar Slim is the godfather of CMR. Giving Bezo props for being a real gangster, Baby will make sure to express that Bezo is his right hand man. Going on to name drop Tanto, Cito, and Nino. Summing up, the people that are closest to him. Touching on the hot bar reunion, Baby will say that he's standing on business. He can't guarantee if the entire roster will be on the tour. Before ending the call, Baby would again say that he has nothing against Turk and he is still a hot boy. Baby will wrap the call up by shouting out NBA Young Boy. The original Hot Boys were a street crew from New Orleans that consisted of Sterling Lofton, a.k.a. Hot Boy Sterling, John Bryant, a.k.a. Hot Boy Mosquito, Anthony Joseph, a.k.a. Hot Boy Dooney, and Terrence Williams, a.k.a. Hot Boy Gangster, Brian Williams, a.k.a. Baby, and Ronald Williams, a.k.a. Sugar Slim, founders of Cash Money Records, were looking for a name to call their newly put together group. Terrence Gangster Williams will suggest that they run with the moniker The Hot Boys. The group will run with the name and release their debut album, Get It How You Live, independently on Cash Money Records. To local success, selling 400,000 copies, primarily in the South. The Hot Boys will follow up with Guerrilla Warfare in 1999, the group's most commercially successful album to date, selling 142,000 copies in its first week and debuting at number five on the Billboard Top 200. Percy Miller, AKA Master P, 
founder of No Limit Records, hails from the Calio Projects, where they failed attempt at trying to ride the wave of the original Hot Boys. P would launch the Hot Boys movie in 2000, changing the spelling to Hot Boys with a Z instead of an S. Written and directed by Master P, the film will star Silk the Shocker, Gary Busey, Jeff Speakman, Clifton Powell, Anthony Williams, Shereen Crutchfield, Anthony Boswell, Mia X, Snoop Dogg, C Murder, and Mystical. This would outrage fans of Cash Money and the original Hot Boys, adding fuel to the flames of the very public rivalry going on between No Limit Records and Cash Money Records. In 2001, the Hot Boys would dismantle. Staying behind would be Dwayne Carter, aka Lil Wayne. Turk and BG would both later be arrested. Turk coming home in 2012 and BG coming home. The internet will be in an uproar with the release of Christopher Dorsey, aka BG. Turk, who had taken to various social media outlets prior to BG being released, would be the topic. GDP, an influential figure on the New Orleans rap hip hop scene, would interview Brian Baby Williams of Cash. Money Records. It was in this interview that Baby would give full details as to his relationship with Turk, along with confirming that a Hot Boys reunion will happen. Before and after the Birdman interview, rumors would fly. Speculations will be made regarding Turk not being a part of the Hot Boys reunion, mostly being fueled by videos on social media. Turk would take to Report Card Radio to air out his differences with Birdman and Cash Money Records. The conversation would go like this regarding Birdman. Turk will say that he's not impressed or infatuated with Birdman as he was when he was a youth. Turk would go on to say, your earrings, your cars, clothes, and jewelry mean nothing to me. I see you as a man, just like I'm a man. That's about it. I don't look at you like that anymore. Further going on to say that Baby never did rock with him. It was Slim that took a liking to him. After spitting to Slim at a DJ in the Noya, Slim would give him his business card. The rest would be history. When asked about the Hot Boys reunion, Turk would say, if the business isn't right, he ain't doing nothing. He doesn't care who it is. He doesn't move the way he moves when he was younger anymore. If the business ain't right, I ain't moving. Turk would also admit at the time of Beezy Slim, he had only written four or five raps and could barely spit. Being from the Noya, Renata Lowe, aka Magnolia Shorty, would give Slim the cosign on Turk. Turk would never let Baby and Slim know that he had only written five raps. He would immediately start hanging around with Wayne, who had a notebook of raps at the time. This alone with the possibility of actually signing to cash money would inspire Turk to start writing. Turk would say, and I quote, I was in the right place at the right time. That's how I became a hot boy. In the words of Turk, telling the truth ain't hating. As soon as I get ready to put it out, cash money shut it down. Um, maybe it might happen without me, you know what I'm saying? So I want to know if you and Manny Fresh are brothers. I mean, we not love brothers, but we like brothers. In the very beginning, I didn't plan on staying behind the scenes, you know, after leaving cash. It's so simple, dude. It's just more so of, you just gotta pay people. It's no secret that Manny Fresh has been vocal about his issues with Cash Money Records. In fact, Manny has been more vocal than Turk, just on a more professional level. Fresh hasn't taken to social media to air out CMR. Fresh, who has valid reasons to feel the way that he feels, only speaks on CMR if asked in an interview. By now, the entire planet should know who Manny Fresh is. Just in case you don't, Byron Otto Thomas, born March 20th of 1969, better known as Manny Fresh, is an award-winning record producer and rapper, best known for his productions on Cash Money Records, as well as being half of the defunct hip-hop duo The Big Timers with Brian Baby Williams. Fresh produced all or most of the songs on 17 multi-platinum, platinum or gold albums for Cash Money, dating back from 1988 to 2004 before leaving the label over a financial dispute. Since the release of Christopher Dorsey, aka VG, the internet has been going wild, with a vast majority of critics and fans alike trying to tell Turk how he should feel, what or what he shouldn't have said, etc, etc. Turk wouldn't be the only former member of Cash Money Records who has or has had issues with the label. Ever since he split from Cash Money, Fresh has expressed his feelings even up until this current day.
day. The on again, off again relationship has been that of a toxic boyfriend and girlfriend situation. Here's what Fresh has to say regarding a hot boy reunion. I honestly don't see a hot boy reunion happening. If it does happen, it will be without me. Um, maybe it might happen without me. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I could, I mean. They would have to give me a super hot check to make that happen. It would take a big hot check for me to be there. That's all I'm telling you. When it comes to Turk, Fresh would say, I'm not sure how they're going to make that happen. There are still issues between them and Turk. Fresh would further go on to say that as long as cash money is in existence, they will have to pay him monies. As long as y'all in existence, y'all going to have to break bread with Manny Fresh. You know what I'm saying? Manny would take Ciamaro to court and win, agreeing to sign a confidentiality clause where he cannot speak in detail about the case. In his most recent interview, Fresh would state that before the resigning of Juvenile, the only way that the Hot Boys would agree to work with Baby was through him. He would be the liaison between the men. Since his court battle with CMR, Fresh had worked with Wayne, Juvie, and Birdman. Birdman would be on the intro of the song called Hate that would feature all three men. This, however, would not be the end as Fresh would again have unfavorable remarks about CMR when questioned in recent interviews. One may ask, is Birdman speaking on Turk in his interview with GDP or is he speaking on Fresh regarding all members not being a part of the hot boy reunion? Like, you know, they're like, well, you know what? He going to tell you the truth. Nobody going to tell you the truth. He going to tell you the truth exactly how he feels. To thoroughly understand the inner workings of the situation at hand, you must first be able to separate business from friendship. If you are emotionally attached to any of the said people in this video, you will more than likely overlook the facts. A common practice used by law enforcement is good cop, bad cop. Good cop, bad cop is a psychological tactic used in interrogation and negotiation in which a team of two people take opposing approaches to the subject. One person adopts a hostile accusatory demeanor emphasizing threats of punishment while the other person adopts a more sympathetic demeanor emphasizing reward in order to convince the subject to cooperate this tactic is also commonplace in the entertainment industry specifically the music business it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that this is what allegedly goes on at cash money records with slim being the good cop and baby being the bad cop Since the inception of Cash Money Records, Ryan Williams, aka Baby, has always stated Sugar Slim is the Don of Cash Money. Slim makes all the decisions and calls all the shots. According to who you ask, Dwayne Carter, aka Le Wayne, is the most influential hip hop artist of his generation, running with his self proclaimed title, Best Rapper Alive. Wayne's rap career would begin in 1995 when he would start appearing on songs for Cash Money Records. Wayne would be the youngest member of the label. Contrary to popular belief, Wayne didn't actually sign a contract with CMR until 1998 per federal court documents. The court docs read as such. On November 1st of 1998, the Wayne Carter and Cash Money entered into a written recording agreement pursuant to which Carter agreed, amongst other things, to provide exclusive recording services to Cash Money per the 1998 recording recording agreement. Pursuant to the 1998 recording agreement, Cash Money agreed to, amongst other things, to render accountings and pay royalties to Carter on or before every 30th of September with respect to semi-annual period ending every June 30th and on or before every March 31st, the semi-annual period ending every December 31st in respect of sales by Cash Money of recordings delivered by Carter thereunder. The 1998 recording agreement contains various provisions relating to royalties and advances payable to Carter, product delivery obligations, and Carter's rights of audit and option periods to extend the terms thereof. Link to the federal court docs, which are public info, is pinned in the comments. The publicly shared drama and dispute over the Court of Five wouldn't be the first time that Wayne would drag Cash Money to court over his bread. In 2005, Ryan Sweeney would represent Wayne in court regarding contractual obligations that were not being honored by CMR. Le Wayne would win the settlement. The court docs read as such. The 2005 settlement agreement amended 
the 1998 recording agreement by, amongst other things, extending the number of options period during which Carter would be obligated to provide recordings embodying his individual recorded performances to Cash Money Records, fixing recording calls and amending royalty rates payable to Carter. The terms of the 1998 recording agreement, not expressly amended by the 2005 settlement agreement, remain in full force and effect. The 2005 settlement agreement also amended the 2003 Young Money Labels Agreement by, amongst other things, extending the term thereof, amending the Young Money Label service fee, and providing Carter with an advance against profits earned by the Young Money Label. This would be another big win for Wheezy. Let's move on. In 2003, Wayne would enter a label deal for his own imprint, Young Money Entertainment, partnering with CMR. Contrary to popular belief, CMR was not the sole owner, operator, nor the distributor of Young Money Entertainment. For a 51-49 split of profits in favor of Lil Wayne, CMR would promote the label while Universal would act as the manufacturer and distributor. The court docs read as such. On or about February the 20th of 2003, Carter and Cash Money entered into a self-styled memorandum of agreement, the 2003 label agreement, for the creation of the Young Money label joint venture for the common purpose of the manufacture, distribution, promotion, and exploitation of recordings containing the performances of new recording artists who will be signed to the Young Money label, following approval by Carter, the sole owner of the joint venture. The 2003 label agreement provided that, amongst other things, after the deduction of a distribution fee and cost, the profits of the Young Money label will be divided 51-49 between Cash Money and Carter, and ownership of all the Young Money label property, company, recordings, copyright, intellectual property would be owned 51-49 between Cash Money and Carter, respectively. The 2003 label agreement also provided that the Young Money label would use the same manufacturer and same distributor, Universal Music Group, Inc., that Cash Money uses for its own recordings. Cash Money and Carter agreed that the Young Money label would be charged the same net distribution fee by Universal in respect of the Young Money label recordings as Cash Money was charged by Universal for Cash Money's own recordings. If any portion of this agreement is broken, Carter has the right to file for breach of contract, during which he will obtain the sole access of Young Money Entertainment, dissolving CMR from the agreement. In other words, I'm dipping with all of my artists if you play with my bread. Put your AirPods in and pull up a seat and grab your popcorn. This is about to be a long one. For approximately four years, numerous issues and disputes could arise between Cash Money and Wheezy as a solo recording artist and with respect to Wheezy's and our Young Money's interest in the Young Money label. The court docs would read as such. Beginning in 2013, Cash Money failed to provide proper monthly accounting to Carter and our Young Money LLC as required for the Young Money label and failed to make timely accounting and or payments of net profits due to Carter and our Young Money pursuing the 2003 label agreement as amended. In addition, Cash Money failed to make the required overhead payments of $200,000 for calendar quarter to the Young Money label and also failed to maintain the escrow account funded with $1 million for overhead payments for the Young Money label. With regard to the 2009 Drake Agreement, Cash Money since 2012 has failed to report to Young Money on a monthly basis and would fail to pay monies owed. Young Money share net of receipts with regard to the solo recordings of Drake's release by Young Money label were not honored by CMR. Cash Money has failed to provide a single accounting record in the respect of the exploitation of Drake's recordings despite Drake being one of the best-selling recording artists in recent years. In summary, Cash Money has failed to properly account for and pay royalties as well as profits to Young Money in respect of the exploitation of recordings owned and commercially exploited by Young Money. Cash Money has also failed to make overhead payments and maintain the escrow funds required by the 2003 labor agreement and the amendments thereof. Moreover, while required to obtain approval from Carter and Young Money for marketing expenses greater than $300,000, which Cash Money failed to do, claiming millions of dollars of marketing expenses for the Young Money label. Cash Money also failed to properly register the copyright in the Young Money label recordings as jointly owned by Cash Money and Wayne. Cash Money refused to accept artists submitted by Wayne to join Young Money. 
Cash Money would also fail to account and pay monies due to various third parties involved with recording artists signed to the Young Money label. Such failures have resulted in legal actions against Young Money and Wayne, causing additional losses for Little Wayne. Upon information and belief, Cash Money has jeopardized the ability of the Young Money label to properly and successfully conduct business and has improperly committed waste to the assets of the Young Money label. With regard to Carter's contractual relationship with Cash Money, as a solo artist signed to the Cash Money label, Cash Money has also failed to properly account to Carter, failing to pay royalties and advances to Carter pursuant to the 1998 recording agreement and the amendments thereof. Despite being obligated to do so as of the date of Carter's complaint, Cash Money has not registered Carter as a co-owner of the sound recordings contained in the album titled I Am Not a Human Being which was delivered for the fourth option period. Upon information and belief of the 2008 amendment, Cash Money registered the copyright in such sound recordings solely in the name of Cash Money Records, therefore breaching the solo artist contract between Wayne and Cash Money Records. Part 5 gets even crazier. The official court documents read that in early December of 2014, Wayne would deliver to Cash Money the sound recordings comprising the second of the solo albums titled The Court of Five, provided for by the 2012 amendment. Although obligated to pay Carter $8 million at the commencement of recording of The Court of Five and $2 million upon delivery of the album, Cash Money breached the 1998 recording agreement as amended specifically by the 2012 amendment by failing to pay Wayne the $8 million payment upon commencement of the recording and paying Wayne only $2 million over the course of the recording of the Carter Five. Moreover, Cash Money has refused to pay Carter the $2 million due upon delivery of the Carter Five. Cash Money has refused to pay Wayne the balance of $8 million due to Wayne in respect of the Carter Five. Cash Money has not provided Wayne with any contracted or statutory basis for failing to pay the balance for the advance for the Carter Five and has given no assurances that it will not similarly refuse to pay Wayne the $10 million advances due to him for the next two albums as required by the 2012 amendment to the 1998 recording agreement. This is where the rumored $10 million lawsuit settlement figure would come from. After Sweeney's diligent efforts, the courts would agree on behalf of Lil Wayne. Despite of what you may have heard or seen, Lil Wayne is no longer a CMR solo artist, although his image and likeness is still being utilized on Cash Money Records website. The court judgment reads as such, by virtue of the foregoing, the relationship between Dwayne Carter and Cash Money Records has been damaged. Wherefore, the plaintiff demands judgment against the defendants in each cause of actions as follows. On the first cause of action, a monetary judgment against CMR in an amount to be determined at trial, or event less than $8 million, with interest at the statutory rate from the date of Cash Money breaches of contract. On the second cause of actions, a mandatory judgment against CMR in an amount to be determined at trial, with interest at the statutory rate from the date of cash money's breaches. On the third cause of action, a monetary judgment against CMR in an amount to be determined at trial no less than $5 million with interest at the statutory rate from the date of cash money's breaches. On the fourth cause of action, a monetary judgment against CMR in an amount to be determined at trial, but in no event less than $13 million with interest at the statutory rate from the date of cash money's breaches. On the fifth cause of action, a judgment requiring cash money to render accountings to Carter and Carter Young Money Entertainment. On the sixth cause of action, a monetary judgment against CMR in the amount to be determined at trial, but in no event less than $25 million with interest at the statutory rate from the date of cash money's breaches. On the seventh cause of action, a declaratory judgment determining that Carter is the joint copyright owner of the recording delivered for the fourth and fifth option periods of the 1998 recording agreement as amended. That Carter and our Young Money LLC are as his joint copyright owner of all Young Money label recordings. On the eighth cause of action, 
a monetary judgment against CMR and an amount to be determined at trial with interest at the statutory rate from the date of cash money's conversion and granting plaintiffs such as other and further relief the court deems just and proper including the obligation of cash money to pay all attorney fees in cause of action. Birdman will later go on to make a public apology to Lil Wayne during Lil Wayne's Louisiana Fest in New Orleans, Louisiana. In June of 2018, the courts will allow Weezy to terminate his contract with Cash Money Records and to take sole ownership of his young money label. Baby will take to the stage at the festival and say the following. I'm paraphrasing, of course. It feels amazing to be home, rocking with my son. I love him to death. I don't know what y'all think y'all think y'all know, but I know what the F I know, and I know how I feel about what I know. I knew this day was gonna come, but I ain't know when it was gonna come. But this dude right here, you heard me? It's the best little dude, you heard me? The realest dude, the illest dude, and I wanted to apologize to my dude worldwide. This is the reason Wayne won't be a part of the Hot Boys reunion. Alton Patterson, a.k.a. Hot Boy Elt, a.k.a. Hot Beasel, a.k.a. Hot, is a well-known figure from the main streets of the N.O., infamously known for running with the street crew, the Hot Boys. It's no secret that Hot put in work. Beasel, a former member of the Magnolia Boys, a rap group that consisted of Marcelo, Cito, and Herb, will find himself retiring from the street life. Before BG's incarceration, he would enlist Hot as the muscle for his label. Y'all already knew it, I'm from power and money, top of city problem solver, homie. It was during this time frame that Hot would be going at Baby. Stone, you know you my big dog, Lack, you know you my dog. You know we went through the sick. We ain't even got to speak on it no more, you hear me? Because the world already know how that went, you hear me, you know what I'm saying? Please everybody believe. went their own ways believe and everybody it, doing their own thing. Everybody got their own independent situation plopping and everybody eating and doing good. And in the future, I guarantee you gonna see a brand new New Orleans, you hear me? Taking shots at Stunner every chance that he would get. The D-Boys, another rap group from the N.O., would consist of Stone and Lack, whom both had street ties and music ties to Baby. It would seem that the city was in an uproar as everyone was going at Stunner simultaneously. The streets were saying that Hop was playing both sides of the field as he would once get into it with Log of Lack over some ish that happened in the project. Giving himself the name Magnolia Landlord would sit well with Jerk, the real Magnolia Landlord. While running with BG, Hop would go by the name The Chopper City Problem Solver. Stone would eventually catch a jose and unfortunately pass while behind bars. It wouldn't be long before Jizzle himself would catch a charge and end up doing a bid. With the Magnolia Boys no longer putting out music, the D Boys out of commission and BG locked up, Hot would make amends with Baby. It has since then been rumored that Stunner had only been to visit BG one time during his entire jose. These rumors were put to bed when Baby would reveal that Doogie had spent his entire last month before going to the feds with Baby at his Miami mansion. If you weren't paying attention, you would not have noticed that during BG's bid, Hot would not be one of BG's biggest supporters. In fact, I can't really recall seeing Hot post anything to social media in support of Jizzle until Jizzle was short. This would lead one to believe that Hot wasn't Josing BG. These speculations would somewhat come to reality upon BG's release. Baby would take to IG Live to film the welcoming home of BG Jizzle. To everyone's shock and awe, BG would not embrace Hot, who was attempting to joke around with Doogie. BG was given Hot a blatant cold shoulder. Some would speculate that it was due to Hot not josing BG while he was locked up. The internet is undefeated. The lie is always more entertaining than the truth. BG would drop bars on Boosie's new song where he would go in on leeches that were around him when he was hot but disappeared when he caught his time. As an outsider looking in, I can tell you right now that BG can be talking about numerous people. There's no facts that have been presented to confirm that BG was busting at Hot. At the end of the day, We'll all just have to wait until Jeezy starts doing interviews to find out what's really going on in his head. Anything else is pure speculation. I'm going to just straight to the punk, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We didn't get what we were supposed to get, you know, just straight up like that. Hailing from the city, known for its early roots of jazz, street slangs like Woody and Hambra, Tab Virgil Jr., known to the world as Hot Boy Turk, would drop his long-awaited solo debut album, Young and Thuggin, that was supposed to establish him as one of hip-hop's most dynamic artists of his generation. Self-admittedly, Turk wasn't a rapper at all. He was just trying to find a way out of the hood. 
and happen to be in the right place at the right time. Not all of Turk's timings would be as precise as when he linked up with Cash Money Records. Turk's struggle with that dog food would find him in Tennessee, where he would be arrested on charges stemming from SWAT kicking in his door. No need to get into details, you all already know the story. Let's move on. Upon Turk's release from prison, he would not be welcomed with open arms. In fact, Turk would reach out for assistance with the burial proceedings for the unfortunate loss of his father. This would fall on deaf ears. Extremely disappointed, Turk would voice his frustrations. Still, his words would go unheard. Meanwhile, Christopher Dorsey, aka BG, would be doing a bid himself. In support of BG, Turk would line Jizzle up with Boosie and Baby, who had no way of getting in contact with BG. All wouldn't be peaches and cream, as Turk would be accused of cop chasing when he would post hashtag BG free Turk who had been home for 11 years, would take to social media doing a barrage of interviews. Turk's first interviews would center around his free BG campaign and his time at Cash Money Records, making sure not to say anything negative about the CMR. Word would get back to BG that Turk was selling free BG t-shirts with Jizzle's likeness without BG's approval. On top of that, Turk allegedly wasn't sending any of the proceeds to Jizzle while he was behind them walls. It wouldn't be long before Turk would reveal that BG had stopped rocking with him entirely. Turk would attribute this to Baby getting in Jeezy's ear, telling him not to rock with Turk. This would be one of the many accusations that Turk would take to social media. This would trigger rumors all over social media. In response to the talk on social media, Turk would leak a recorded call from prison between him and BG. The call wouldn't go so well as BG was seen to check Turk on the call before the call was cut short. Let's fast forward. Turk, who is still doing interviews, has changed his tone. He is now going in on his former label mates, exposing the intimate details of their private business. Regarding BG, Turk would say that BG was afraid of BG Derrick, aka Bulletproof Baby's nephew. In the streets of the NO, there was a rumor circulating that the Derrick bat Doogie up in a Thomas. Turk would later go on to say that Bulletproof was bullying all them boys except for him and Juvie. To make matters even worse, Turk would even speak on an encounter that went bad between he and Wayne with some groupies while they were in relationships. In my opinion, where things went all the way left for Stunner wasn't the fact that Turk exposed the fake Rolexes. It was the fact that Turk had settled out of court and received a lump sum from CNR, yet was still bashing them after they had gotten past their financial differences. I gotta keep it a buck with you. For some reason, I believe some of this shit is for the lights and the cameras. Like the old saying goes all promotion is good promotion whether good or bad we might just see turk as part of the hot boys reunion boosie months before bg's release would take to social media and tell the world that he would drop a bag in doogie's lap when he came home not just any bag one hundred thousand dollars to be exact in a shocking turn of events bg's first time touching a mic since his release will be for a verse on boosie's new song turk has yet to receive a call from jeezy What's happening, man? You heard me? This the Lil B. Jeezy representing. Lucky. Chop a city problem solver, homie. You hear me? You know what I'm saying? Please everybody believe. went their own ways believe and everybody me, doing their own thing. Everybody got their own independent situation popping and everybody eating and doing good. And in the future, I guarantee you going to see a brand new New Orleans. You heard me? Chop a city. You heard me? The new face of the N.O. Respect and a check. Cynthia Dorsey, a.k.a. Miss Sin, is one of the most respected women in Uptown New Orleans, and not just because she is the mother of Christopher Dorsey, a.k.a. BG. Originally from Parchman, Virginia, Miss Sin's dad was a military man. Her mom was born and raised in the N.O. Miss Sin, who came up in Virginia through her childhood years, would move to New Orleans until she was 14 years old. Missing her friends, Miss Sin would attempt to run away back to Virginia. Miss Sin would eventually meet E.G.'s pop at the age of 18 through one of her friends. Small in statue, Miss Sin would go by the nickname Lil Sin coming up as a teen. BG's pops was a longshoreman with strong religious beliefs. Unbeknownst to many, Jizzle was a deacon in his grandfather's church as a child.
Miss Sin is a humble, simple woman who isn't into the glitz and glam of being the mother of a famous rapper. In fact, at one point, Jeezy copped her at Ben's. Miss Sin had him return it for a Camry, which was her whip of choice. Although BG was heavy in the streets, it would be by no way fault of Miss Sin. Doogie's father would unfortunately pass during a failed robbery attempt. Miss Sin would do her best to curtail Jeezy from the streets. Being a single parent, this would be a difficult task for Miss Sin. BG, who would be in and out of jail, hadn't caught a real joke where he had to do real time until catching his federal case before social media outlets who had no regard for what Miss Sin was going through would be running her down just to do interviews about her son Miss Sin would be very vocal on her own social media accounts Miss Sin would often post to her social media account running her own free BG campaign The free BGB Day celebration would be huge in the city. Sin would take this opportunity to shed light on her feelings about her son's sentencing in the crooked criminal justice system. Sin would also post positive messages and prayers, praying to God that when her son comes home, he doesn't involve himself with the so-called protector that was around him before he caught his time. We can only speculate who that so-called protector was. It wouldn't be long before Miss Sin would do several interviews on social media regarding both her and BG's life, including Gigi's upbringing as a a child. It was in these interviews that Miss Sin would touch on the intimate details about her son and the dudes that he surrounds himself with. Miss Sin would also give her opinion on Brian Williams, aka Baby of Cash Money Records. Refusing to answer any questions about the royalties owed to BG, Miss Sin would instead say that she could tell that Baby loved BG and that Baby would oftentimes scold BG for stressing her out. Further going on to say that she hopes and prays that when BG is released, his so-called protector has BG's best interest at heart, making sure to acknowledge that she wasn't talking about baby and slim i done said this before and i'm gonna say it again i'm not around these dudes nor am i in the circle to make a huge assumption that bg is not rocking with hot i'm a journalist i'm only reporting the news in my honest opinion i don't feel like stunner would have hot around jeezy knowing that missin and doogie wasn't feeling hot like that at the end of the day i believe the doogie ain't rocking with hot shit is cap I'm just glad that homie is home. I wish him much success. The truth will come from Jeezy's mouth and Jeezy's mouth alone when the time comes. Whatever, let's do it. Man, give us some of that camera. What's the crack? What's the crack of let, me, let me know everything there is to know about Cash Money. All right, first thing to know about us, I got the rap game on lock. You must know that first. Can't nothing and nobody fade what we trying to do and what we about to do. Second thing is, we got this game on our level. You understand what I'm saying? A lot, you know, Puff my man. I got to give it up to him. He my man. But everybody need to push over. You know, I got to give it up to Jigga, Jada, Kiss, the whole Rough Rider family. And from Met Red Man. But regardless, it's cash money. With all the hype surrounding the recent release of Christopher Dorsey, aka BG, there would also be controversy. The first of those controversies would involve Tab Virgin Jr., aka Hot Boy Turk. Social media would explode with rumors as to why Birdman didn't roll out the red carpet for Turk upon his release from prison. This would trigger a response from Birdman, who would in an interview respond to the Turk situation, going on to say that he doesn't have a problem with Turk, further stating that Turk is still in HB. This wouldn't stop the internet from speculating that Turk would not be a part of a Hot Boys reunion if one does take place. The back and forth over the internet will prompt Turk to upload several response videos to his platform. Turk would go as far as giving a story to TMZ regarding his involvement with the much anticipated Hot Boys reunion. Meanwhile, during his interview with GEP, Stunner would confirm that a Hot Boy reunion is definitely happening, but not everyone would be a part of it. It was this statement that would cause the speculation and narrative to be spun regarding and third in or not being part of a hot boys reunion as the music industry would continue to celebrate 50 years of hip-hop revolt world 2023 provide live performance
conferences, panel discussions, and live tapings of Revolt shows over the weekend in Atlanta, Georgia. Revolt World was created to celebrate the global impact of hip-hop and introduce a new live event category that represents the highest level of entertainment, education, and opportunity. The vision was to build on the tremendous success of the Revolt Summit and deliver a first-of-its-kind event that reimagined the intersection of culture, community, and connections with the most influential leaders across generations. Contrary to narratives being spun on social media, Revolt World has nothing to do with Birdman or Cash Money Records. P. Diddy, who owns Revolt, will take this opportunity to have Juvenile and Manny Fresh as performers for Revolt World 2023. Although he does not a scheduled act, Manny will bring out Hot Boy Turk to perform Meet a Hot Girl during his set. The crowd will go wild as Turk and Manny did their thing on stage. Juvie would also take to the stage and rock his set, performing several of his greatest hits. This was a good look for the culture. Hopefully, a Hot Boys reunion happens in the future with Manny and all of the original members of the Hot Boys. Revolt World will go on to be a huge success. The performances will provide a look into the impact that the Hot Boys reunion would have with all four members. E.G., who has federal parole restrictions over his head, wasn't able to attend. As for Weezy, I have no clue why he wasn't present. In my opinion, it is Wayne that will be the challenge when it comes to getting a reunion done. Wayne has since the Hot Boys gone on to become a megastar. Thanks for coming through the cabin. We collect those items now. Thank you for your cooperation. We'll be landing in Atlanta shortly. It is so beautiful and wonderful to be here with you this morning. There is a big anticipation in the city of Atlanta happening soon. Tell me about Revolt World and what it is bringing to the culture of Atlanta. The way that I like to talk about it is that Revolt World is the Super Bowl for the culture. Revolt World is a hub for emerging leaders to connect with the best of the best and build their networks in various industries. Following the success of the summit in past years, Revolt World is a new and improved event with exciting activities that will leave its attendees wanting more. Held in Atlanta, Georgia, the headliners were Don Tolliver, Moneybag Yo, Chop Life Sound System, and Uncle Waffles. The keynote speakers would be Young Miami, G Herbal, Queen Naya, Young Jeezy, Currency and Omarion. Other guests would be Auxiliary Cord Wars, Babyface Ray, Brian Henry, Brian Michael Cox, Byron Messiah, DJ Patio, DJ Holiday, DJ Skyler, DJ Stormy, DVSN Gigs, Hourglass, Jay Murphy, Jazzy, Juvenile, King Combs, Meta, Maya Nadine, Manny Fresh, Scarlet, Uncle Luke, and unruly. In honor of Hip Hop's 50th birthday, nonprofit organization We Are Hip Hop will represent the theme and pay homage to the global impact of the genre. It will serve as a unifying declaration that personifies Revolt's position as a cultural authority and leading multimedia network. Speaking of celebrations, the event presented by Walmart will be marked as an historic milestone for Revolt as it celebrated its 10th anniversary. Manny Fresh, who was a guest DJ at Revolt World, would also have his own set. Fresh would perform some of his singles as well as hits from the big timers. Through the shock and awe of the crowd, Fresh would unexpectedly bring out Hot Boy Turk. This, however, was unpracticed and unplanned. Prior to taking the stage, Fresh would inform Turk, who was in attendance as a spectator, that he would bring him out on stage. The DJ for the set was even unprepared, as for the first few seconds, he would be out of sync with Turk's verses. Fresh and Turk would go on to perform I Need a Hot Girl. Dewey, who was unaware that Fresh would be bringing out Turk, would be next to perform. Dewey would perform several of his classic hits during his set. Dewey, who was unaware that Fresh would be bringing out Turk, wasn't prepared to add any of the songs that he and Turk were on to his set. Turk not performing on stage with Dewey had nothing to do with the hot boy Turk cash money beef. Stop the cap and the false narratives. Y'all should be wanting to see that man win. In my opinion, it wouldn't be a hot boys reunion without all four members and DJ Manny Fresh. Hey, 